It's like a... It's like the perfect new metal riff, basically. What's up, everyone, and welcome to FAQ 110. Have you... Ted? 110. Have you seen this? Yeah, so... You might have seen this in a video this past week, where I tried out distortion pedals. This is the A1.6D, and it's the latest Solar guitar out there. And uh, as you can see, it's a natural wood color. And it's... Uh, shit. I've been waiting to show off this guitar for a long, long, long ass time. I've been having this for a while. It's actually been standing there in my guitar stand for a lot of FEQs and videos, but people just haven't noticed it. But it's been there. It's... Oh, just look at this. Amazing with, you know, the uh, brushed whatever, you know, uh, retro look you have to the electronics. And look at that, you know, the wow, and the brand and the brand. It's just like, ah. Oh. Hell, I'm super excited to finally launch this and it's out and it's available to uh, pre-order and there's also a 7-string version of this so uh, yeah, very excited about that uh, but do not worry, I still have my old guy Strat here right next to me so don't you worry about that, I'm still old short story actually, yesterday I had this guitar standing against my 2x12 here and my son came in and wanted some help from me and when he went out, he turned his back and knocked the guitar over on the floor and he saw my reaction i was like and he started crying i felt so sorry for him but i mean that's the good thing about having a beat up guitar it doesn't really matter if it gets even more beat up so that's really good but i was feeling really sorry for my son you know he knew how much the guitar meant for me so uh th that's a good sign my son is not an asshole i love that Hi Ola, we know your thoughts on downhill and damage plan, but have you ever heard Dimes, Vinnie's and Rex side party? Rebel meets Rebel, I think they're the best band besides Pantera as a whole. Yes, I do know of uh, Rebel meets Rebel, that's the album they have with David Allen Coe. And it's a killer album, I must say. It has a shit ton of really good Dimebag riffs on it, even though they're a little bit more fun than, you know, the riff that he made for Pantera and Damage Plan. They're a little bit more party riffs, I would say. And, uh, I mean, the lyrics are actually pretty good, if you actually listen to them a little bit. There's a, a lyrical line that kind of got to me, and it's the part where he's singing Rocking Rita is looking for a dime. And that's kind of like, ooh, shit, that hit, hit real hard. You know, Rocking Rita being a Dimebag's girlfriend. So, this album has a fair bit of moments on it. It's definitely an album I can enjoy, and, uh, you know, if you just want some more of that Dimebag riffage and soloing, Go check out Rebel Meets Rebel. Grey Render JXF. Hi Ola, so my band is recording a new album and we decided to attempt to record it ourselves instead of shelling out more studio time. I've been struggling a bit to find the right levels for the guitars to sit well in the mix. What advice can you give us for instrument levels and mixing, mastering in general? I think it all comes down to you just using your ears and just reference listen your mix against other mixes that you like and enjoy. So, uh, I mean, it's just about listening, basically. And if you're uncertain about the levels, be sure to check in as many different setups as possible with your monitors, with headphones, in your car, just to make sure that all the levels sit. So don't be afraid to go around to different systems and uh, checking your mix for, uh, for, for the leveling, in that sense. And uh, an advice, I mean... Just do it more and you'll become better. I think it's very important that you mix with a limiter on that kind of pushes the envelope a little bit. Because if you're mixing and not doing some sort of mastering at the same time, you know, the whole image of the whole mix will become a little bit different when you start mastering afterwards. And uh, another tip I can give is just to give your mix to a professional mastering guy. Um, just to have this last set of, of uh, professional ears to your mix. And uh, last advice would probably be to actually let someone mix your album. That someone that you know will make a great sound of the album. I think it's... I think in the day of age now, it's very important that your album sounds as good as it can. Us as people have become very, you know, shallow when it comes to a lot of things. I mean, if it doesn't look good, we don't like it. If an album is not really sounding that good, we turn it off. And you know, it's just that People need to be captured by the music and stay for a longer period of time. And uh, the first step is to make the mix and the master sound as good as you can. Because that, uh, you know, a production can uh, invoke another type of feeling. You know, the feeling of like, ooh, empowerment. 
you know, when you listen to a song like Cerberus. I'm not saying that this is doing it for all the people in the world out there, but you know, when the riff in Cerberus kicks in, you know, it's a feeling of empowerment and that's because of the production and the mix. And um, if you just have a half-assed mix with the same riff, it just wouldn't come across as being uh, as awesome. So a really good mix and production can actually save a lot of songwriting, I would say. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Wes Harris, hey Ola, proud member here. Love the show, brother. You are kick-ass and inspirational player. Keep up the great work. Which solar model do you like best and which pickups do you prefer? Live shows, recording, solar, fishman, EMGs, etc. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, the latest of you, I got so many awesome and positive comments for you guys. Thank you so much. That was uh, the one that I was talking about, addiction and, you know, James Hetfield and stuff like that. And a lot of people came out and gave me really positive comments. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Uh, regarding guitars, well, the good thing about the solar guitars is that whenever you pick up a new one, it will feel familiar to the other one. So I don't really have, you know, a specific live guitar or anything like that. I can just take this one and go out and play it. And uh, all of them also carry the Duncan Solar pickups, which is the pickup I record and play live with. So that's an easy choice for me. I can just go with any of these guitars and it will sound kick ass, basically. So with that said, I'm still a big fan of Fishman. Uh, Fluence Modern, by the way, I think they're the most excellent uh, active pickups out there. I like them a lot more than the active EMGs, but at the end of the day, I'm using Duncan Solar pickups for live when recording. There you go. Kamil Kishinsky, hi Ola, how live streaming affected your guitar practicing? Do you feel you should put more on your guitar playing during practicing because people are watching at you? Did you have any problems with getting distracted during practice time in the past? Um, well, to be honest, now when I started live streaming on Twitch, by the way, you can, Ola uh, England official, go, uh, go follow me on Twitch. Uh, I started playing and streaming like the afternoons here during the day. If, you know, if I'm rendering a video or something like that, I just push on the live stream and I'm, I'm live basically. And what that does to me, I'm just sitting and playing, noodling around. And, uh, you know, I haven't really been doing that in a long while. So it's basically on Twitch, I'm sort of practicing. You know, I'm playing guitar, I'm making mistakes sitting there talking at the same time and it's kind of it's kind of awesome I must say because I'm playing more guitar and obviously I'm practicing more now because I'm going to China this coming week when this FAQ is being aired by the way I'm probably going back from China or no it's the last day of music China so I'm still in Shanghai when you're watching this I feel like for the YouTube live stream that's what I practice for like that's a full performance but Twitch that's basically all the shitness in the world for me <laughs> that's like my low point uh, of guitar playing, but I think it's still good because it makes me take away a little bit of the barrier, you know, of uh, performing in front of people and, you know, it's okay to make mistakes in front of people. So if you want to see me make mistakes, go to my Twitch live stream. That's great. Okay, this slide is not really helping this guitar. I'm just going to hold it like this so you can see it. Enrico Stenelat, good morning Ola. I play guitar during I watch your FAQ and I often miss some notes when I play fast single note riffs. Do you have any tip to train this? Uh, you can either train it away, or you can just call it free jazz. That's what I do. Everything's intentional. Zero deaths, no mistakes. Free jazz. Rhett Goat Sergeant. Ah, oh, yes, I remember. Rhett. What are you going to name your new Stratocaster? Um, okay, I'm not naming my guitars. I think that's kind of silly, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I don't understand why people name their guitars uh, like they were pets or something like that. They're not a pet. They're a tool for you to create music and, uh, and uh, you know, get you to the point where you want to be. It's like if I would uh, name my shoes something. My shoes, Esmeralda. That's one shoe, the other one is called Kent. Kent and Esmeralda. Those are my shoes that gets me to places. So yeah, if it helps you to name your guitar, that's great. Good for you. Vina Chesney, have you heard of Orbit Culture? Really good metal band with pounding riffs. They just dropped a new single and it's one of their heaviest yet. Okay, it's not often that I recommend music on uh, the FAQ, but Orbit Culture is a sick and awesome upcoming Swedish metal band. And you should definitely check them out. I truly enjoy their music and they're super brutal and they play solar. Mr. Kotte, hey Ola, did you see the Anderton's video interview with Mark Agnesi? Am I gonna open up this Pandora's box? I guess I should. So last week, Mark Agnesi of Gibson Guitar, you know, Mark Agnesi who made this video, I mean, or Gibson made this video with Mark Agnesi, 
you know, talking about being authentic and going after smaller brands and, you know, it was a really shitty video and a lot of people hated it and it put Gibson in a bad spot. Anyway, Andertons put out an interview with Mark Agnesi this past week and uh, it's safe to say a lot of people did not enjoy the interview and um, people thought that they would probably address this whole uh, this whole uh, last half of a year where uh, everything just went to the shitter with Gibson and you know the way that they portray themselves through all these videos but the interview was basically just about Mark Agnesi <laughs> and uh, I think a lot of people were disappointed with this because this was basically like the perfect opportunity to kind of you know either like explain the whole situation or even like I don't know what they want to do if they want to like form an apologies and you know take a step back and say like hey man we did a mistake that's a you know that's that that happens and you know kind of redeem themselves but no they actually didn't talk about it which is kind of a kind of a bummer because why would you then make the interview you know when I was out guitar shopping this uh, past week when I bought my Strat here I tried a fair bit of new Gibson guitars like expensive ones from the US and you know I was basically kind of shocked <laughs> about the condition of these guitars. You know, I saw a lot of people saying like, yeah, you know, Gibson is shit, you know, the, the latest years they suck and, uh, you know, the guitars suck, you start building great guitars and all that. I just thought that was part of the hate towards this whole thing that happened with Gibson, you know, and I, I, I just thought that people were jumping on the bandwagon with saying that guitars, the guitars were shit. But the guitars that I played that were, you know, five or six grand, they did definitely not look, sound or play like a five or six grand guitar. Basically one of the guitars had like residue still here on the neck joint of the guitar and it looked like, looked like a Chinese copy of a Gibson guitar and I was actually shocked and uh, you know kind of bummed out actually that it was this bad. Even to the point where I've tried an Epiphone and the Epiphone was almost better in a way. <laughs> in that store like playing a Fender, I mean all the Fender guitars I played US made were absolutely incredible. Fender is at the top of their game right now and I, f I, I, I sincerely hope that Gibson picks themselves up and you know reclaim that legendary status because I think they definitely deserve it. They just have to you know make better guitars. <laughs> so yeah I did watch the video I was a little disappointed to be honest you know all of this just does not look well with Gibson and um, I truly truly hope that they figure this out and I think they will but I just hoping it will happen soon because right now the guitars that I play they were not good. Gibson has been making really great guitars in a lot of years so I know there's a you know the used market out there there are so many great guitars out there with the Gibson name on it I really hope that the new guitars uh, from now will be just as good if not better and uh, that they redeem the name to be worthy of the legendary status. Does that make any sense? Great, thank you. Ola thinks about things and people are gonna get pissed. Toma Gaming, hey Ola, what do you think about Stevie T turning down Dragon Force? Oh, so many uh, serious questions. Uh, great, uh, I saw the video, uh, Stevie T got offered to join Dragon Force to play bass. Uh, I don't know how long it was, like a month ago. He said yes and now he uploaded a video saying that he can, cannot do it, basically. And uh, the video was very sincere, very serious. It showed a very different side from Stevie T that he's battling anxiety and uh, depression. I think it's very refreshing and also very important that he made this video and just showing, you know, that he's also a human being. You know, being a YouTuber that uploads content all the time and getting people commented on you and, you know, people giving you shit, people giving you love, it's not the easiest job in the world, I must say. It was really real to watch this video and basically it, for him to explain the whole situation, you know, having his anxiety attacks and almost, you know, having a mental breakdown before, uh, you know, actually doing the gig for this upcoming tour. I applaud him actually for doing that. I think, I think it was a very bold move and uh, kudos to him, man. I love Stevie T. You know, it, it, respect, Stevie. Respect. Vincent Jones. Is that a racing seat? This is a racing seat, yes. So, uh, so does that make me a racist? Aquarius 61, do you or have you ever used pot to help your creativity for writing? 
Uh, no, I never did pot. I never smoked. I've tried it during the 60 on the tours. I tried it a fair amount of times. You know, I it wasn't really anything for me. And uh, so no, I never used that. Uh, if there's any drug that I would use, it was probably going to be alcohol. But I'm not even doing a lot of alcohol at all. I mean, when I'm at home here, I never drink, basically. If I'm on a tour, yes, I can have one or two beers, play a show, that's it, basically. You know, I just drink less because I don't want to feel like shit the day after. And the older you get, the more shit you will feel after you had a good night of drinking. So, I just want to, you know, have a good day. So I don't drink that much. Jan Hederington, good luck with the skin problem. Skin problem. What? Help! Thanos Dem, how annoying is it to hit your little finger on the volume knob of your new guitar? Alright, so he's referring to my Strat. Yes, it's very, very annoying. Whenever you're riffing and, you know, moving your hand... I always knock my pinky on the volume knob. To the point where I have to do this. I have to fly with my hand, like this. Out here. <laughs> now, I'm probably gonna re uh, remove this and put a... Maybe a kill switch or something like that. Just something that's down here, so it doesn't get uh, in the way of my playing. But yeah, that's probably one of the only uh, little quirks that I don't like about the Stratocaster. And also that it's going out of tune a lot, but I think it also has to acclimatize to my room here before I can, uh, you know, put it to the final real test and make my video. But for this video, I'm gonna hold this guitar like this because I want to sell guitars. Have you seen this guitar? Blanks for Music LTD. Ola, any chance of a live run through of your album before you go to China? Enjoy the one you did before the last Haunted Gigs. Well, I won't be able to do it before I go to China, uh, which is... I'm, I'm in China right now, by the way. But I will do it next week, so on Friday this coming week... Alright, it's sold. Friday the 18th, I will have my live stream performing the full Master of the Universe album here on YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna link to the live stream so you can set a reminder so you don't miss out. Thank you, it's gonna be awesome. And I'm gonna practice like an asshole for that one. Live the day! <laughs> Burps are still okay. This is not okay, by the way. If I do this, I'm a Nazi now. Okay, let me show you a cool riff from that YouTube song. I'm currently practicing that and all the other songs from uh, the new album. But there's a pretty gnarly death metal riff in it. Uh, right in the middle of the song, it's this. The guitar is tuned to D, standard D, with a drop C, okay? <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, so this is how it goes. It starts like this. Bam. Pretty cool. There you go. Thank you so much. Jiz Jizzy Lober. Ola still got the blues. Not. He hasn't. He's just showing new gadgets he owns. The last 50 FAQs are so... Look at me. What I have or buy. Solar A1.6D. SolarGuitars.com. Pre-order. And with that said, thank you so much. So there you go. That was the last question. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment sections of because there's two comment sections. No, there's... Uh, put them in the comment section and I'll look it up before I record the next FAQ. Thank you so much. Have a great Sunday. And uh, I'm in China right now. You know, YouTube is banned in China. I won't have access. So hopefully this video goes up scheduled and there's a free-for-all in the comment section, basically. So have fun! <laughs>